An old English saying goes, the pen is mightier than the sword. And we're all familiar with a picture is worth a thousand words. When combined, pictures and words can be very powerful weapons. That's why today we will talk about propaganda. Communicating messages to audience is an essential component of our strategic non-violent movement. We need to convey the vision and goals of our non-violent movement. Reveal information and facts that our opponent is hiding. Bring messages to various groups within the society. Initiate public debate. Reach and influence the opponent's pillars of support. We need to communicate through many channels. But propaganda is also a massive and powerful tool in the hands of your opponent. You may be sure that at the very moment your movement starts to become powerful, your opponent will activate their propaganda machinery. Before you know, you may be labeled as junkies, hooligans, foreign mercenaries, traitors, or even terrorists. Bad guys in the past have used this negative propaganda to discredit movements and prevent people from joining them. People all over the world know the Marlboro Man. Masculine, tough, strong, independent and handsome. If you smoke Marlboro, you seem to share those features, no? Definitely not. The Marlboro Man died of lung cancer. The Philip Morris Company implemented one of the most successful psychological operations in history by selling us a health-damaging drug advertised through the image of a man purported to depict healthiness and masculinity. It will be just as easy for your opponent to discredit you and your movement. So, besides communicating your messages to the people, you may be challenged to deny your opponent's propaganda. That is why, for example, the activists of the Solidarity struggle in Poland, when faced with lies broadcast by their communist government, instead of denying these lies, just decided to take their TV sets for a walk. Instead of watching state-controlled TV, funny Polish activists were turning a half an hour of main state propaganda show into their own hub of rallying and having fun. In order to run successful movements, you will need to put on your propagandist hat. Think about your target audiences and understand the process of message development. Good. Now, in order to communicate messages, we need to define three things. One, whom we want to impact. Two, what needs to be said. Three, how to communicate things that need to be said. The messenger. First of all, we need to define what is the target audience by dividing them into four groups. Then we will start developing our messages for each one of them. One, members and supporters. They already share our vision. We need to keep them bold, motivated, ready to act and take risks and to communicate with each other. They also need constant encouragement and the feeling that they belong to our group. Two, the wider audience. This includes a wide spectrum of people, from those potentially close to you to the actual supporters of your opponent. You want to change their views and make them believe in your vision of tomorrow. You may also want to work on bridging the social distance between you and people close to your opponent. Remember, the numbers required to create social changes are always in the middle. 3. Potential allies. It's time to imagine the spectrum of allies, which will include every organized group in your society, from political parties and NGOs to book and fishermen's clubs that may somehow be related to the topic, and then ask yourself, how will I pull this group across the spectrum towards my vision of tomorrow? What may be their wishes, motivations and interests, and how to find a common ground with them? Here is an important lesson to be learned. Forget differences before democracy. You want to create a wide coalition, making alliances and staying together until your strategic goal is achieved and your opponent is removed from his position of authority. 4. Third parties. You will need to expand your communication battlefield by speaking to audiences which are not directly related to the conflict. We call them third parties. This includes everybody who may be watching and sitting on the fence, from domestic or international NGOs promoting human rights, domestic or foreign media, sometimes even mighty international institutions. Like when the whole world was helping the anti-apartheid struggle in South Africa. You want to identify, communicate and win the hearts and minds of those third parties to your cause and vision as well. Once you identify the target audience, it's time to work on message. But what is message? 
Message is the limited body of truthful information that is consistently conveyed by a candidate, party or non-violent movement in order to provide the persuasive reason for an audience to choose and act on behalf of that choice. You may find that you need to find a variety of messages to communicate your vision. With your message, you need to adhere to two golden rules. One, stick to your message and repeat it loud and often. Don't lie. Because, if our targeted communication loses its credibility, it will become ineffective. At the end, once you've studied your target audience and find your message, it's time to select the messenger. And like in our little clip on tactics of non-violent struggle, you can use many different messengers. You may imagine your message as graffiti, billboards, posters, newspapers, on the internet, sometimes even spread as rumors or word of mouth. But when you are picking the messenger, be sure to accommodate it to your target audience. Who are they? Are they homogenous or diverse? What are the cultural norms of the population? What are the respected symbols of social values? What's the language they use? What are their expectations? What is the gap between these expectations and the reality of their lives? Once the target audience is analyzed and communication objectives are established and prioritized, our messages develop and our messengers are ready to get our propaganda machinery going. Keep it up until we see you again in our next episode. Dilemma, actions and laughtivism. 